Being the strongest military faction in the world, the Marines, or the Navy, are the sword of the world government. Their primary objective is to bring order and justice to all five seas, and they will stop at nothing to achieve this goal. But to go into more detail, the Navy is the formal military of the world government. It is unknown when they were established, however we do know that they date back at least two centuries. In their long history, the Marines have been able to maintain control over most of the One Piece world. The only stretch of sea that they don't have a good presence in is the New World portion of the Grand Line. This is due to the four emperors and their powerful militaries. The main base of operations for the Navy is Marine Ford, a symbol of peace and justice Justice that sits at the center of the Grand Line, until it was destroyed and moved to the New World. Speaking of Marine Ford, it's unknown how many Marines there are exactly, but let's just say that at the Paramount War, there were over 100,000 troops in attendance, and even then, there were still other Marines stationed at other bases. In fact, there are hundreds of Navy bases scattered across the One Piece world. So even if you lowball the Marines to 150,000 members, that still makes them by far the largest fighting force in One Piece history exceeding every emperor and other faction that this world holds. So within this vast military, there are obviously many ranks to go over. First we have the infantry, which are the people who enlist into the navy with no prior training. At the very bottom of this group are the seamen classes, seamen recruit, seamen apprentice, and seamen first class. And below that, at rock bottom, is chore boy, which is pretty self-explanatory. The seamen classes are the grunts of the marines, the fodder foot soldiers who don't really do anything significant. Despite that though, there were some characters with the seamen ranking, such as full body and Django. Above that are the petty officer rankings, consisting of petty officer, chief petty officer, and master chief petty officer. Fun fact about these ranks is that once a marine reaches the rank of petty officer, they're allowed to wear whatever they want, not just the standard white and blue uniform. To cap off the infantry, we have warrant officer, however there are no named characters with this rank. Now we get into the commissioned officers. Unlike the infantry, officers already have training or an extensive background in the navy. They're often given special leadership roles as well. To start off, we have ensign, lieutenant junior grade, and lieutenant. But no matter how high or low you rank as an officer, officer, you're allowed to wear the justice kanji on your back. The next three are lieutenant commander, commander, and captain. And this is where the ranks get interesting, particularly captain. It's at these three ranks that notable fighters appear, such as Kobe or Toshigi. Captain is also the lowest rank that can lead their own vessel. However, they can be stationed on islands as well. Above those ranks is Commodore, Rear Admiral, and Vice Admiral. Commodores are usually given special objectives that other ranks can't fulfill. An example of this is Branu, whose job is to place bounties on pirates. Now it's important to mention before we go on that not all Navy ranks are based on strength. For instance, as far as captains go, they can range anywhere from Chapter 1 Luffy level to Kobe's level. Which, just as a reminder, characters like Kobe can easily stop torpedoes with their bare hands while underwater. However, for the rear admirals and onwards, basically just throw everything I said out the window. Because this is where most of the actual strong marines lie. In fact, vice admirals are required to know at least one type of hockey, which at this point in the series doesn't sound that crazy, but when you consider that 99% of the One Piece world doesn't use hockey, it kind of makes sense. Many also have mastery over the Roku Shiki techniques as well. I gotta make a video on that shit. Okay, now onto the big dogs, the Admirals. Admiral is the second highest rank of the Marines, and there can only be three at any given time. They are under the direct command of the World Nobles, and regarded as the greatest military powers. And there is a very good reason for that, as one Admiral is enough to destroy 99% of pirates. They usually have multiple different types of hockey, maybe even some advanced versions, coupled with an overpowered devil fruit. The only individual pirates that the Admirals can't defeat are the Yonko, you know, the four strongest pirates in the world. The three current admirals are Fujitora, a blind swordsman that can control gravity, Kizaru, one of the OG admirals that can control light, and Ryokugyu, the newest admiral that can create deadly forests. It's important to mention that these names are just aliases that correspond to a color. So for instance, Ryokugyu in Japanese means green bowl, 
but his real name is Aramaki. Again, the Admirals are the Navy's greatest military powers, and they're all pretty much equal to each other in terms of strength. However, there's an even higher rank than this, Fleet Admiral. The Fleet Admiral has command over the entire Navy and are the only officer that can initiate a buster call. Basically an order that calls for the destruction of an entire island, and most likely mass genocide in the process. The current Fleet Admiral is Sakazuki, a character with possibly all three types of hockey and the user of the Mag Mag fruit, basically letting him control magma. This power fits very good with his personality as well, as Sakazuki not only has a burning hatred for pirates, but anything that doesn't fall under his sense of justice. It's also why, under his leadership, the Navy is the most competent and powerful force that it has ever been. Speaking of justice though, since the Navy is such a giant organization, there are a few different factions within it. So the vast majority of the Marines seek the same thing, to bring peace and justice to the world. But how they go about doing this can vary. Some Marines bring about absolute justice, the belief that justice will always be served, even if you have to kill some of your own men to do it. Other soldiers are more traditional heroes, that believe the Navy is a good organization, but they can also see the flaws within the system. And there are many Marines that don't necessarily go with either of these paths. For instance, there is an Admiral who believes in unclear justice, and they barely do anything about pirates unless it's absolutely necessary. Moving back to the more heroic Marines, we have S.W.O.R.D. S.W.O.R.D. is an organization of soldiers who have actually resigned from the Navy, but they still operate on the military's behalf. Due to this, they work outside of the basic command structure, and they mostly take matters into their own hands. For instance, when Captain Kobe was captured by Blackbeard, Garp and members of S.W.O.R.D. went to go rescue him, even though they weren't authorized to. On the topic of authorization, there are many tasks and responsibilities that the Marines have. Obviously, there are the basics, patrolling parts of the ocean, protecting islands from pirates, and hunting down criminals. But sailors can also take up more complex tasks, like infiltrating evil organizations or carrying out buster calls. There are also special divisions in the Marines as well, such as the Science Department, the FBI, and the Photography Department, which is literally just a group that takes pictures for bounty posters. There's also positions for retired sailors as well, such as reporting corruption in the organization or training the next generation. Plot twist! There's actually a secret final boss of the Navy. This rank is known as the World Government Commander-in-Chief. The position isn't technically a part of the Marines, it's more of a world government job than anything. But even so, this is the guy that the Fleet Admiral has to report to. And the only known character with this job is former Fleet Admiral Kong. Now, I originally thought explaining the Marines was gonna take like 30 minutes, but since this isn't that, I'll go over who I think the strongest Marine is. Because I actually never talk about them in any of my power scaling videos. As for who is the current strongest Marine, many like to point to the Admirals or Akainu, but nah, it's Garp. Not only does he slam Aokiji, who Akainu took 10 days to defeat, but also he has the best Conker's hockey feat in the series. Better than Luffy, Kaido, Shanks, or Mihawk. However, for Shanks, Mihawk, and especially Akainu, we haven't seen much from them yet, which is the main reason that I don't put them above Garp. But for the strongest Marine of all time, yeah, it's still Garp. Prime Garp is not only stronger and has more stamina than his elderly self, but also clashes with characters like Roger and Whitebeard. And if you want to cop out and say Kong, then go ahead. We literally know nothing about him besides him being Fleet Admiral. On the topic of what I think of the Marines as a whole, um, I mean, I don't really have any feelings like negative or positive about them. They've been in the series since chapter 1, so I'm really indifferent towards their designs, most of the characters in the Marines, like, all of them aren't really that appealing to me, but they're not bad. But from a narrative standpoint, I do love how Oda uses them to paint the picture of not one faction in this world being just. Pirates are bad, the navy is good, those titles don't really make any sense whatsoever, and if One Piece were any other stock standard shonen, then the only good marines we would have are Smoker and Kobe. But no, Oda goes 10 steps further and shows us like 20 different characters with 20 different ideologies, but they're all working towards the same thing, and I think that's what makes the navy as a faction so compelling. Hey, 